Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly, and welcome back to another devlog entry for my current ML Agents project. All right, so you're looking at the challenge as it is right now with trained agents, and you can see that uh, they're working. Let me stop this for a sec just to remind you of what this challenge is. So we have a button on this side of this wall, and then we have a button on this side. If one of the agents stands on this button, then the door will slowly open and then the other agent can go through, stand on this button to keep the door open, and then the other agent can go through, and then the goal now, this is slightly updated, is to stand on this platform. So this platform is smaller than it was, and you'll notice when I play, these buttons are moving now. So this is a harder challenge than it was last time because I got it to work, and then I, once I got it to work, I wanted to make it a little more challenging. So, there were a few things that I did that I suspected and I experimented and figured out which of my suspicions were correct and which were not. So the first thing you'll notice probably if you watched the last one is that they're not jumping. So jumping was a huge distractor, it turned out. So I just want to show you really quick uh, what that looks like. So to give you an idea, this right here is actually the run that you're watching the trained uh, neural networks from. So this took uh, like three three hours to get to about here, which will, probably would have been good enough to stop, but I, I let it go for about seven and a half hours. Uh, and so it got pretty darn reliable, but yeah, that is a long time to train. Um, but then I wanted to experiment with a couple things. So I wanted to try turning back on jumping but because it takes so long to train, I, I knew that it trained a lot faster, trained in about 15 to 20 minutes, if I uh, didn't move the buttons around at all. So I just, I turned off button moving, and then I did this. Let me just double check. So I took notes here, uh, and you can see, let's see, uh, made buttons and platform static again, turned back on jumping so that I can test if jumping is a distraction. All right, and then I let it train overnight, I say. So let's go back and just look at this really quick. So wait, which one was that? That was 19. So that's this one, red, right here. I, <laughs> I let it go overnight and it never got anywhere. So you can see that that's a big problem. And then in, uh, in the next iteration, I turned jumping off again. And so that looks like that. That's how much faster it tra trained. So uh, red line here is jumping enabled. Blue, light blue line here is no jumping allowed. That's the only change. So huge difference, clearly something that uh, if I want to do more uh, like sort of video game type puzzles like this where jumping is required, I think that's gonna require some new thinking about how to handle jumping and make it so that it doesn't just bounce around because clearly that was not working. Okay, so what else did I change? Um, I made a reward for standing on the button. Uh, I thought that that was gonna be a, a big one and it turned out that that actually did help a lot. I needed to make sure that the button uh, was balanced. I didn't want them to get too much reward for like if they stood on both buttons at the same time, I didn't want them to get double reward because I was afraid that would just make them stand on the buttons the whole time. And so the way I did that was basically, uh, I think I made a reward so that if either button was pressed, then it would add a reward. So yeah, I just have it set up where if either button's pr uh, pressed, then they get half a reward divided by half of or 0.5 divided by max steps. So like a small amount of reward each step that a button is pressed. Both of them get it. So their friend could be stepping on the button or they could be stepping on the boat button. Both of them get a reward. I thought that that was a good way to encourage collaboration. Um, I also fixed a negative reward. So I had this this code from the team button agent that I showed in the last video that is basically just a copy and paste from the wall jump agent. I had, uh, I think it was set to like 0 .000, negative 0 .0005. And 
that looks innocuous enough, you would think, well, it's just a tiny fractional thing, but uh, you know, it shouldn't be a big problem. Well, the problem actually is it was too big of a, of a negative reward. So this right here, this is what I typically like to do for a negative reward when I'm doing something that's just like basically a punishment for being alive. That's what these agents get. That's, a, that's their lot in life, unfortunately. Uh, they get this negative reward that just encourages them to complete the task faster. That's all it does. So if they take the complete amount of time, then they get a negative one added to their step because, or to their uh, final reward because you have, let's say, 5,000 steps. You add one 5,000th together 5,000 times and you get one. So that's why it adds up to that. And it turned out that as it was, the hard coded value that I took from wall jump was two and a half times more than negative one. So it was negative 2.5 if they didn't complete the task. Whereas they're only getting a positive reward of like one for getting to the goal. So that just didn't really line up. And I, I didn't want them to get a negative reward for doing well. So I, I did fix that. And I think that helped quite a bit. Um, also figured out that self play was uh, needed to be removed. So my hyperparameters and all my settings in the YAML file turned out to be not good. Um, I did a little research and the self play that I mentioned in the last video, turns out that's for if you've got multiple agents playing on teams together against another team. So clearly that's not what I have right here. And I'm sure that, um, you know, that all these things had some impact influence on why it wasn't working. I don't know how much. I'm not sure how it works because I haven't taken the time to really read into it, but clearly it wasn't needed for this. So I removed it and I basically just copied the uh, behavior, uh, all the this behaviors thing from pyramids. It's basically identical. Uh, I just kind of copied and pasted this these values instead of the soccer values that I had before. And I will mention curiosity here because curiosity seems very important for this task. So basically, uh, when I turned off curiosity, it didn't work. Um, I made a note here. Uh, basically, I did this testing with curiosity turned off versus this one was uh, the one where it was turned on. So 20 and 21. So let me turn, I'll just compare those two. So 20 is the blue line and the pink line is 21. So this is with curiosity turned off, makes a huge difference. So um, worth experimenting with it. It's not always needed. I know that because I've done plenty of experiments where it wasn't required, but in this case, it really helped a lot to get that task completed. So, uh, yeah, this is this is something that I highly recommend that you do as you're going through as you're making updates. The best thing you can do is take as many notes as possible. So you can see that I said things like added a reward to other agent if one agent is in the target area. And then I say it worked, but it took three hours. So things like that, that can really help, especially if you do like step counts too. Um, it can help you compare things. And then when you uh, are trying to figure out what worked and what didn't, and you let it train overnight and you come back the next morning or two days later and you're looking at it and you're like, what What did I do for run 13 that made it go so much worse than run 12, for example? And then you can look back and you can see your results and then you'll find out what it, what it was that you changed there. Now, the best thing you can do is ver use version control. And if you have something that works great, then you stick with it. And uh, you, <laughs> so you can tweak from there, take notes still, but then if, if anything goes wrong, you can jump back to that version. Um, that's not something I've done yet, but I need to do it. And if I was properly disciplined, I would have already done it at this point. Um, but that's just a piece of advice for anyone that's jumping into ML agents. Uh, there was a point where I was working on the ML agents for a course. I think it was for the Hummingbird course that I was working on it. And I had taken some notes on my whiteboard in my office and uh, I thought I had a good grasp of what was working and what wasn't. 
And then it turned out that I had this one awesome run. It was like, you know, run seven or something turned out to be amazing. And I was so happy about it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to make this even better. And then 20 runs later, I had no idea what I had changed, but I could not get back to those results. So I wish I had saved it. So that's my parting advice. And uh, with that, I will end this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and let us know what you thought in the comments.